so we're in at Brandt Steel and we're just going to take a look at the Great Tech Special Part Manager with reference to adding a glass clamp to this. So I'm just activating this from the ribbon tab, uh, the Power Pack one, obviously the Special Part Manager icon. I'm going to come in here, select glass clamps, and this will change the dialog that you see in front of us. And under here, I'm going to obviously select the family that I've created. Now, the way that I did that was I did actually add new producer. So you would you would select this and would come up with adding a new producer. So you would type a name in here as to what you wanted. You could select an icon. Um, I would recommend that you put it within the advanced steel system somewhere. So if you're not, not sure where it where it should be, maybe just put it under the shared folder here. Just pop a, an icon in there so you can create one, you can select it and then obviously add it in. And obviously if you've had one from before, it'll want to replace it. So I'm just going to go cancel to that. And when you do that, it will add in the producer and it will also give you an option to add in the family. So if I go OK, you will now see that it tries to add it in and it will come up with another pop up and it will say put in the family name here. So if we just type that in, then we, we can actually see that appear as well. So this has been it's been added in. So so I don't I don't actually want to want to keep that, but uh, that is how you would add it in, and then you'll get a plain dialog in here, and you would you would start to add in your various entries by using the plus button down here, and then start to add the components in. So if we uh, just uh, close that without actually saving that, and then just come back in again. So I'm re-entering the dialogue because I want to use one that I've set up before. So here, if I come to glass clamps, <coughs> again, change that, the dialogue changes. I'm going to come in here under the producer. And obviously, I only have one family type in here. I could have multiple different families. Uh, some suppliers have many different types of connectors. And then I can come in and I can add a line. So how I do that is I press the, the plus button here. It adds a line in here. And personally, the first bit that I'm going to do next is to go and select my clamp. So I would browse to the required place. And I tend to store them under the systems folder, which I've sort of uh, explained in my previous video but actually creating the part drawing itself before you actually start this process. So I'm going to select uh, this clamp file here, which is, which is actually the one I have open on the screen. Once you've done that, you can then click into this cell and you can uh, type in uh, the suitable name. So it can be the same as, um, you know, as, as the part name, if you, you know what it's stored under, or you can be slightly different if you want. So we can put a slightly different name in there. Let's do that. Uh, and then I'm going to come down into the parameter type in here, and I'm going to set it to be a clamp because I want it to be a straight clamp for fixing a panel with not around a corner. The next part I may come into is actually to control and set the thicknesses of glass. Now, depending on the clamp manufacturer, you may have a requirement to have several different glass clamp thicknesses. So I'm just going to set three values in here by typing obviously three in the top bit and then typing the thicknesses in here. Uh, pressing OK commits those changes. Similarly, I want to come in and control the profile selection. So being as this has a square back to this part, I'm going to assume that it will work with these. Now, it, it may be slightly difficult to see, but you just need to click the ones you want and there's, there's a slight halo put around them obviously i haven't picked the round ones because i probably wouldn't use it with round ones because it's it's square <clears throat> i may have a different fitting for that the next bit to look at is any holes that are required so you again can control the location of this so in this case i want it to be in the post and again we have the little right symbol to access the coordinates so the first hole I'm going to have it at the back here, which is obviously where there might be a hole in the fitting to fit it through the post. So I'm going to put that in and commit that there. And the next thing to do is put the obviously the diameter in. So this is the diameter that will be formed in the post. Uh, 
similarly you could come along and you may want to put a different hole into the the panel so again you would uh, enter this dialog and you'd need to put a value in here um, I am going to type this value in here just for now just so I finish this process and then obviously put the the diameter in there so I'm just gonna make it slightly different in there so uh, and then just click out of that now while I got that on the screen before I sort of exit the dialogue you need to save this if you don't save it it won't commit it so I'm going to just click the save button at that point to make sure that it's um, it is saved so that was this icon here looks like a floppy disk for us who remember floppy disks okay so I'm, I'm just going to close that dialogue and I just wanted uh, one thing I wanted to just explain is how I got to the measurement for the hole in the middle so I'm assuming the hole I may have a hole in here for a pin a safety pin in the glass and it would be in the middle of the part but along the x-axis so I just drew a line in there just to get that reference point and then I just used uh, an AutoCAD command to uh, obviously measure that use the di command the distance command and then obviously some snap points and i get the measurements down there so that's how i arrived at that i do just want to remove that line because i don't want to keep that at the minute in in here um with that i'm just going to come back to a railing now so this is a railing that we uh used before created before if you're starting a new railing or a new model in a new session you, you it will probably be fine it'll just load in you'll see the the the, the family you've added in and the, the, the producer etc and obviously the parts but if you haven't you may need to force it to do this so uh, this is why I picked an existing railing to try and demonstrate this process within the tool so under here obviously we've got panel set and we go to the connection sub tab and we can see we, we, we do actually have the the family that I created before but I, I'm actually just gonna um, just force a change so by doing this I actually change it to QRail in here and you can see the parts changed in there and then I'm going to come back in and go back to the one that I wanted so this is my great tech G rail one and then I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to pick my uh, test clamp 2 which I just added in and with that I'll change the part you can see there was a slight change in the part there because the, the little dishes uh, dimples on the edge uh, were removed and and just to highlight a couple of elements here so so obviously you can see the holes are in the, the glass and obviously in the the post as well so that is how you add in your own special part and link it to the connections for glass clamps within the standard railing macro from Greytech and that is using our special part manager and the normal method to create a special part solid prior to adding it in to advanced steel thank you Great tech.